Well, welcome once again to another Noahide moment. I've mentioned in the past we've been talking about prayer. Today we're going to be looking at uh, the blessing. And actually it's an introduction to the types of mitzvot that are really relevant in our lives. Noahides may adopt any Jewish mitzvah in all its details, provided that that mitzvah is logical or provides a tangible benefit to society, oneself, or the world as a whole. Among the mitzvot that are compelled by logic, for example, would be prayer. However, those mitzvot compelled by logic or benefit are of a different nature other than the Noahide mitzvot. These mitzvot are generally in three categories or three classes. The mehu yives is mitzvot that one must do. For example, the mitzvot involved with establishing justice in courts are mehu yives. And I'm probably not saying that correctly, I know, but forgive me. They are obligatory and one is liable for not doing them and for neglecting them. Now there is the other category is called rehush, mitzvot that are optional. This means that the mitzvah exists and applies to a person. However, one is not punished or liable for neglecting the mitzvah. If one performs such mitzvot, then he is accorded the reward and the merit for doing so. And the third category of mitzvot is those that have no application to us at all, to any of us. Some mitzvot are entirely inapplicable to some people. For example, the Kohanim, the temple priest. They have commandments unique to them alone. Their mitzvot are inapplicable to other Jews. Other Jews may not even adapt or adopt these mitzvot voluntarily. They're not priests. It is very risky and spiritually dangerous to adopt mitzvot to which one has no connection. At best, one receives no merit for doing so. At worst, one may receive divine punishment. This is true for both Jews and Noahides. One should be very cautious when adopting practices to which one has no obligation or connection. And this has been... I think many of you know, a problem within the Noahide kind of movement. Uh, Some are trying to take on uh, practices or um, mitzvot that are not applicable to them, as we as Noahides. The seven mitzvot, or seven categories of Noah and their subdivisions, generally fall into the first category, those that are obligatory, the mitzvot. Jewish mitzvot, though, which have no connection to Noahides, such as dietary laws or the observance of many of the Jewish holidays, falls into that third group. Noahide mitzvot, compelled by logic and practical benefit, generally fall into the second category. One does not need to perform such mitzvot, but it is very preferable and logical to do so. Let me try to sum up what we've just discussed. There's essentially three categories of mitzvot. One applies that we should do, we must do, and those are obligations that we have, the seven commandments or the seven categories. And then there are those mitzvot that exist that we can do or don't have to do. If you do it, you can get reward for doing it. If you don't do it, you're not going to get punished for not doing it. There are those mitzvot which have no application to us whatsoever. And that is where I think a lot of good meaning uh, Noahides get into trouble. They try to take on too many obligations out of their love of Hashem, I think, and out of their, their desire to do Torah. Uh, and they get themselves into trouble by trying to do more than they're supposed to do. I hope that this helps a little bit. May Hashem bless you this week. Don't forget to register at nativ.net for the upcoming Noahide Mitzvot and Lifestyle course.